The Irish Potato Famine, 1845 through 1852. In 1845, in Ireland, the potato crops were failing and potato plants were turning black and rotten. The cause was potato blight, or more specifically, the fungus Phytophthora infestans, caused by the wind, rain, and insects. It spread throughout Europe, but hit Ireland the hardest. This would be known as the Great Famine, or the Great Hunger. By 1845, the potato, which was originally brought into Ireland by the landed gentry, was Ireland's most important crop. Almost half of Ireland's population, mainly the rural poor, were dependent on potatoes to live. The average Irishman ate 14 pounds of potatoes a day. They grew well in Ireland's climate, and even in poor soil, and in wet and cold conditions. Potatoes were nutritious, a great source of vitamin C, and their harvest was plentiful, so there was enough to feed families, and farmers had enough surplus to feed their livestock. The Irish were overly reliant on one variety of potato called the Irish lumper. This lack of variation put Ireland at high risk of mass famine. When blight hit the potato plant, it may look edible from the outside, but it was a slimy pulp inside. It would soon appear rotten and shriveled once the fungal spores settled on the plant, which spread to healthy potato plants around it quickly through the breeze. The smell was so revolting that it could make a person vomit, and eating an infected potato would leave them in agony. One of the sources for the blight may have been the United States, arriving through ships coming to Europe. A strain of blight was seen in 1843 on America's eastern seaboard, but going further back, the pathogen could be traced to Mexico. Great Britain had the richest empire in the world at this time, and had an oppressive rule over Ireland. For the first year of the famine, there was little death from hunger. British Prime Minister Sir Robert Peel imported corn or maize from the United States. However, there weren't enough mills to ground it, and the poor couldn't afford it. As well as this, the Irish peasants' diet of potatoes made the corn unsatisfactory. Unlike potatoes, it lacked vitamin C, so dependence on corn resulted in scurvy. While some Irish got used to the cornmeal, there was not enough to go around. Surprisingly, even as things got worse, grain and other foods were still being exported to Great Britain during the famine. Lord John Russell took power as Prime Minister in June 1846 and formed a Whig government. It took a laissez-faire approach, which meant minimal government involvement in the economics of Ireland. The British government looked down upon the Irish as less than human and their potato crops as lazy, suggesting that they needed to unlearn dependency on the government. The Protestant evangelical belief that the famine was an act of providence, a divine judgment, also justified an action. Charles Trevelyan, a civil servant with direct responsibility for the government's handling of the famine, was a big supporter of this idea. The British government opened soup kitchens in 1847, which fed over three million starving Irish peasants, but they closed them down after six months. They also continued to export food that could have fed the starving Irish population as they did not want to interfere in the business of the English landowners. Public work schemes were also introduced to provide employment, but malnourishment made hard labor extremely difficult for workers. Most of the Irish were Catholics, and half did not own the land they worked on. Instead, they were renting and working on tiny plots of land for English landowners, many who were absentee landlords who lived in Britain, not Ireland. Because of the famine, Irish peasants fell behind on their rents and were evicted. Their houses were often demolished to prevent them coming back. Many went to the overcrowded workhouses where disease like typhoid was rampant. As well as death from starvation, famine-related diseases killed many of those suffering, a cause of a weakened immunity from malnutrition. Those that were evicted from the lands and had nothing to eat could be seen dying or dead in ditches along roads. Many committed crimes, stealing food or trying to get caught on purpose in an attempt to be sent to jail or a penal colony like Australia, where they might be fed. By the time the potato crops recovered in 1852, one to two million Irish left the homeland and emigrated, some to Britain and many to North America, where many died on the coffin ships during the journey from hunger and disease. The Irish refugees that reached the east coast of the United States established themselves in cities like Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, and Baltimore. The Great Famine was one of the worst times in Irish history and left one million dead. The Irish population had dramatically declined with one quarter dead or emigrated, spurring a century-long population decline. Subscribe for more history videos. Hey, Simple History fans! 
If you're looking for a better way to support the channel and help us create more epic content, consider becoming a sponsor on our channel. Sponsoring means that for just five bucks a month, you get these amazing perks. You can be the first to see new episodes with early access. You'll be able to watch new episodes before anyone else with this perk. A custom icon that shows alongside your username in the comments section and in live chat. When you sponsor us, you also become an influencer. With sponsor-only comments, you can communicate directly with us and help us pick the topics that we'll do next on Simple History. Our videos will continue to be uploaded as usual, and remember, it's not mandatory to sponsor us. Thank you for letting us feed your hunger for history.